Hello everyone, my name is Jennifer Stay. This is Coloring Bliss. I've got little white Rose sitting on her white pillow in the on the white countertop back here <laughs> because today we're going to talk about coloring white objects. It can be a little tricky, but I'm going to help you through it. We're going to be coloring today this tulip coloring page. I'm going to create a white tulip. But very near here in the future, I am filming a brand new workshop for our Coloring Bliss Academy. We're going to be coloring white objects and we're going to go in depth. These are five different things to consider as you're coloring white objects. So we're going to be coloring two really adorable coloring pages. This one right here, a white dog on a white pillow, is one of the things we're going to be coloring this page. I love it. And then this page right here, which is inspired by our cat that passed away recently, little Mishka. Here is a picture of him. You can see his beautiful white chest hair. Very magnificent. <laughs> so we're going to be coloring and recreating that white chest hair on that illustration right there. Isn't that adorable? And here's a little white rose sitting on a white pillow. And that was the inspiration for this coloring page. And I'm so excited to do these coloring pages in a workshop setting where we can take our time and talk about how to create beautiful white objects on a coloring page. It's going to be a lot of fun. So I highly recommend you check out the link in the video description and come on over and learn how to become an Academy member. If you like these new coloring pages, they are are so charming and sweet and you have a picture of one of your furry or feathery or scaly friends that you would like to have turned into a charming coloring page like this then you need to follow the link in the video description because Steve and I have started a new project and Steve's been working hard to get this new project going where we can turn your pets into charming coloring pages it's really cool there's like three different ways to get your pets um, put into the book. It's going to be the very first volume is going to be 30 really adorable charming coloring pages all inspired by photos of our furry and feathery friends and the scaly ones too. <laughs> <laughs> all right so let's get to why you're here today and that is to learn how to color a white object. Now there's lots of different kinds of white objects and like I said today we're going to be doing a simple white tulip to teach some of the basic ideas behind um, coloring white objects. And the very first thing that I always say that you can do to make coloring a white object super easy, it's like a hack, is to <laughs> color the background something other than white. <laughs> it's a really quick and easy way to do it. Let me show you my fingernails. If you can see, that middle finger right there has white flowers on it. And the only reason those white flowers look white is because they colored the background. And that's just a quick shortcut. But Steve has challenged me to do that last. He wants to see me color a white object without that quick and easy hack to make <laughs> something look white right away. <laughs> so we're going to save the background for the very final step rather than doing it first to um, really make that white object pop. So the next thing we need to ask ourselves is light source. Not just where the light source is coming from, but what kind of light source. Now, you can have a light source that's straight above, you can have top right, top left, you can even have below light sources. Mm -hmm. For instance, what if there was a candle sitting next to our little tulip here, maybe down here, that would cast a light source coming this direction and it would be a yellow light source. So we're going to do a top right light source. That is my go-to light source whenever I am coloring. It's kind of my comfort zone. And because we are trying to create a white object here and we're gonna be pushing some different techniques, I wanna stick with my comfort zone, which is a top right light source. And we'll probably just go for maybe a slightly yellowish light source, we'll see. We'll see how we color this up. The next thing that I want you to consider is the color scheme of your coloring page. If you're coloring a full coloring page, like that one right there, for instance, you're going to have a lot of different colors and you need to keep in mind that white area and how to make it really pop. And so for me, on this coloring page, we have a tulip with green stems and green leaves 
and I'm thinking a light blue background in the end. So all of the greens and the blues are all very cool colors, and I want to make this tulip really sort of come forward into the eye, so I'm going to use warm shadows, warm grays. And for that we're going to go into our beautiful set of Prismacolors here. This is my full set of Prismacolors and use their warm grays. They also have those beautiful French grays. Yeah. So either set of grays would be great. They're both really warm and they should make that tulip come forward. So let's start off by coloring the leaves and the stem and then I'll pick my pencils for the shading and we'll talk about how I do the shading as soon as we get those stems colored in. So starting with greens. To color the leaves and stems I'm going to use the tried and true Jennifer's Rule of Blending Thirds. I've got three yellow green colors I'm going to bring together with this rule. I'm using Chartreuse PC989, I'm using Apple Green PC912, and Olive Green for the Dark that's PC911. Follow the link in the video description that will take you to a video where I teach Jennifer's Rule of Blending Thirds a lot slower. Right now, just enjoy the beautiful three colors coming together. Alright, like I said, I wanted to use warm grays on our tulip to create the shading and show off the light source. So I grabbed four different warm grays. I grabbed 10%, 20%, 30%, and 50% as my darkest of the warm grays. That's PC 1050, 1051, 1052, and 1054. Now I'm going to be considering where the light is coming from, which is the top right. So that means anything that overlaps or is in shadow because the light can't get to it gets a kiss of the warm grays. Let's make it look beautiful. Now as you're watching me build in the shadows, I want you to keep in mind that I'm using all four pencils that I just mentioned, but I'm working very carefully. So you can always add more gray if you want to, but it's really hard to take it away. So work on your lightest pencils first and consider where the light will have the hardest time reaching. That's where you preserve and save that darkest gray. Other than that, I'm just doing little flicks of color to bring in that gray shading to make it feel like a beautiful white tulip. All right, the next step is to consider any kind of reflections that might be happening around a white object. White objects are never white. There are always some other different colors mixed in. And for this little tulip, we've got a green stem that would be reflecting up onto those white petals. So let's add a little bit of green to help with that illusion. All right, to help smooth out my color pencil strokes, I've grabbed my PC938 or just plain old Prismacolor White. I'm going to use that to smooth things out and bring it all together. Okay, last step is to add some bling if you want to. That would be like a sparkle effect or a metallic effect. In this situation where we've got a white tulip. I'm not feeling like adding any kind of glitter gel pen because that will just add more gray and I don't think it will actually help. So the question I always ask with um, when I'm ready to add bling is will it help or will it hinder what I've already created? And I'm really liking how this tulip looks so I don't think I'm going to mess with it by adding any kind of bling. Now if I was doing like a snowman or snowflakes or even like white frosting on a cupcake, that's where I would really love to bring in some bling and really make it shine. I think that would be fun. But for this one, we're sticking with the natural look that we've created here. All right, I'm going to ask Steve to come over so he can see our tulip before I color the background in. All right, what do you think of my white tulip? Oh, it's nice. It's very simple. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you can definitely see the petals that are um, closer to the light source. Yeah, you can tell what's behind and what's in front. And Yeah. I like the reflections on the bottom. So. Yeah, thank you. So now I'm going to add in uh, just a light blue background just to see how it looks, but I'm going to hold this right here so that when I'm done with the blue background we can do a side-by-side -side with Steve's fancy camera technique and we'll see <laughs> the before 
about a blue background and then we'll see after. So let me color up the blue background real quick. Okay, for the blue background, I'm going to use an Ohuhu marker. This is an alcohol-based marker. It's number MG030 Blue Gray 03. It'll make laying in the background really fast and really soft and pretty. Now to add just a little more fun and interest, I'm going to add some white dots into that background, give it some texture and some interest and really set off that white tulip. What do you think, Steve? I'm going to slide this over here and by the magic of video editing, Steve's going to put on the left side over here my original um, without a background and now you can see the difference that a background makes. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. I love it. It's so soft. So pretty. And I love the green too. It's just really popping and yeah. that's so pretty. So that is how you color a white object. Comment below, did you like the before the background or the after the background? I'd love to know which version of my white tulip you prefer. Thank you so much for joining us for this video. I hope you learned some useful tips and tricks for coloring white objects. Don't forget that I have a full workshop series that goes even more in depth, especially into coloring fur that is white. It's going to be a lot of fun. Follow the link in the video description. And also, don't forget that if you want your pet turned into a charming coloring page, we can do that for you. So follow the link in the video description for that as well. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful, colorful, blissful day. Bye bye everyone. Can you hear her snoring? She's just full on snoring right now. Such a cute little white dog on a white pillow. That's gonna be tricky to color.